Why did Mr Gurdjieff use horns to show Beelzebub's progression in his evolution? For readers of Beelzebub's tales to his grandson by G.I. Gurdjieff, we all know that at the end Beelzebub is blessed by his endlessness and, spoiler alert, attains a Podku lad. The reason of sacred Podku lad is what Beelzebub comes to and this is displayed by Beelzebub's horns growing and as they grow five forks start appearing on them and I picture this to look like antler horns that's how I visualized it when I was reading the book now in ancient times horns or antlers were seen as signs of knowledge and wisdom because antlers are like radio antennae like aerials and can pick up the fine good vibrations of all that was going on around them Shaman are depicted using them in their shamanistic rituals as they dance their sacred dances to get in touch with the gods, to get in touch with deceased elders, to get in touch with Mother Nature, whatever it is that they are trying to get in touch with. In Judaism, Moses is sometimes depicted with two short horns to denote or to represent his knowledge and wisdom. But maybe, really, he already had his horns not as a representation, but actual physical horns which enabled him to be in touch with the finer vibrations that the divine was sending out. The devil is often depicted with horns. The devil is a fallen angel. Do all angels have pawns, is what I'm wondering. Is that their way of sending and receiving messages to and from the divine? And I wonder if they're no longer depicted with these horns in art today because... Horns are usually associated with the devil and dark forces. I wonder if Mr Gurdjieff saw any of the arts depicting the Saint Eustace. I'm, I'm sure Mr Gurdjieff already knows this story. Saint Eustace um, was around in the 2nd century, but originally his name was Placida. And he was a Roman soldier who went out hunting for some, some game. And he came across the stag and was about to hunt it down when suddenly, between the stag's antlers, the Christ appeared and spoke to Placida. Now Placida was obviously overwhelmed and listened to the Christ's words and he was immediately converted to Christianity and took the name Eustace. His story continues and you'll have to go and find out more about that as to why he ended up becoming a saint. In fact, his whole life story is told in the stained glass windows at Chartres, which was one of Gurdjieff's favourite haunts. And in some of this art you can see Jesus Christ amongst the staglers, the stag's antlers, and some is just a cross. Now, whether this story of St Eustace was made in the time when Christianity was trying to depose the pagan beliefs, I'm not sure. But pagans revere the stag and its antlers, so maybe this was the Christian authorities trying to appease the pagans with this story, bringing one of the old pagan traditions over into Christianity. But I find it intriguing that Eustace saw either a cross or Christ himself between the antlers of the stag. In various pagan beliefs, the stag's well, there's tales that the stags take on the many aspects of the pagan horned god. And in some stories, pagan gods take on the forms of a stag when they come down to earth. The stag also has links to royalty. And we see much of this in all the heraldic arms that are uh, used in the royal castles and such like. But the stag was also seen as a bringer of omens, good and bad and was a connection to the underworld, or the supernatural. And of course we've got the pagan god Kununus was said to wear a pair of antlers upon his head. So the antlers theme has been around in many faiths and mythologies for a long time. In Christianity the stag is seen as a symbol of the Christ, and it vanquishes the enemies which were referred to as snakes, and the stag tramples on the snakes. So horns have an important significance and Mr Gurdjieff, I think they signify revelation. 
an initiate has passed the test and gone on to the next stage. May our horns grow as we continue to fathom the gist. <laughs>